Hey everyone, Sergeant Friday. It's actually a it's a Tuesday, eleven fifty seven a.m. July sixteenth, twenty twenty four. Coming to you from your ass hurts news network. And uh, this is a message for uh, all of us: reality versus all of us. Where do we stand in the uh, battle against reality? And and it's quite shocking, quite stunning to to to, to realize that we uh we have no uh, no defense against reality. Matter of fact. We're so terrified of reality, we do everything we can to avoid reality. In the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. And for those of you wise enough, or for those of you who crave enough, and uh, for those of you that would like to hear perspectives outside of the box that we're all put in, I can. I, I urge you to listen forward, listen on, hear what I have to say. Um, I'm also going to point out that this is going to be given in a very, very calm manner. Regardless of the amount of passion this topic and topics similar to this will rise up inside of me and get me excited. And we all know the language I can speak. I've said it numerous times. I'm going to say it again. I should not be the messenger. I'm not equipped to be a messenger. I'm not equipped to do the things that I pro- that I that I suggest you we all need to do. I am equipped to be a part of, but not the person that does does the uh, the messaging or the. Uh, the physical work and attributes that we're all going to have to put forward to do. I, I'm able to fund some of it. I'm willing to do that. Um, so on to the topic, reality versus all of us. Many of you don't know, and many of you do know, but most of you, if whether you are in the camp of, of knowing or non-knowing, have no recollection of, or for whatever reason, don't seem to remember that this is the third of Trump, the third attempt on, on President Trump's life. The third assassination attempt that was done in the public. The first one was where he was given a speech and a man in front of the, in the stage, in front of the podium, pulled out a handgun and was wrestled to task by the, uh, by the people around him. Everyday Joes. I don't know how many of you remember that, but that is, uh, that is a fact. Additionally, President Trump's motorcade was attacked by a vehicle that came flying out of the woods. Now, some may argue or show that that wasn't actually an assassination attempt, but uh, it certainly came across as one. And I, I, I didn't spend too much time reviewing it, um, but there you have two. And the third and latest attempt, they they shot his ear off. And and just just for the sake of humor, folks, I mean, Trump don't listen to nobody anyway. So if you're going to shoot the guy, don't aim for his ear. <laughs> it's not going to change a damn thing. Okay, so now back. Back to and that that was a little dose of reality too, right? Because we all know how Trump is. That's one of the reasons we like the guy. But let me give you something here, folks. This is this is I hope I hope a message that's shared and carried across and people take it to heart. It's not a message of, of religion or spirituality or anything of that nature. It's just a simple common sense observation that we're all victims to ourselves, that all our problems are created by our, ourselves and. The three assassinations attempts that I just pointed out, uh, ironically, all seem to fun to, to, to the I almost swore I'm not gonna. All three of these assassinations attempt all seem to follow the presidents that happen to be the ones we vote for on this side of the aisle: the centrists, the middle of the road, the common sense, the Republican, and even you right wing wackos. Uh, I don't know why that is not so surprising to people. Um, or that people are not pointing that out. Why is there a lapse in coverage when it comes to Republican candidates or presidents, including the Bush, the Bushes, right? And then you've got Trump, Reagan. Why is it always Republican presidents that are taking the brunt of this? I'm going to suggest to you folks, it's because you do everything you can to avoid and ignore reality. In every single one of these instances, you've jumped on the bandwagon of conspiracy theories, as if you're going to solve this through the fucking phone, excuse my language, or through the computer, by observing it and making comments. The Secret Service must have been in on it. This one must have been. Meanwhile, you do nothing at all to stem the tide of the attempted assassinations against the people that you voted for. You've done nothing to stop that, nothing. You go down these conspiracy theories, these rabbit holes, and you chase all of these different ideas and possible theories and this and that and the other. You listen to rumors and speculation, people that come in with sources, people of third-party delivery of information, and you do nothing about the actual issue at hand. And the issue at hand is a grave one, folks. It's very grave. Why are the Republican candidates always the one that's the ones that are they're attempting to be killed? Why is that? 
And that's because Republicans do nothing. We do nothing except jump into the hole of conspiracy. We do nothing but jump into the rabbit hole of theory. And we do nothing but jump away and run as fast as we can from reality. You know, in connection with the, with the groups that I hang with now in true crime, they're, they're an obvious purveyor of avoiding everything that's reality-based. They can witness a crime and be told the facts of a crime and then go out and find their own theory, their own victims, and their own stories to tell about that crime. Meanwhile, the actual truth of the crime is completely ignored. The same happens with politics. As I gave you the facts that it's the Republican candidates that are always being attacked, Steve Scalise, Rand Paul, Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan, George Bush. I don't need no, even need to know anything more than I said. Kennedy was attacked because basically he had some of the same principles and ideas about the nation as the other people that I've mentioned were attacked. Abe Lincoln. I mean, where do, how, far, how far does this have to go, folks, before we realize that this amazing, incredible tool, the most powerful weapon the common man has ever been put, put in front of? the internet, the ability for me to make this particular message, to make these points and deliver them to, I hope, millions of people, if 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 not, then even one, who then may himself take or herself this message and share it among others. The bottom line is, folks, this is a tool that we can provide action with. We can come together. We can start going for the and reviewing all of the backgrounds, all of the information on all the Secret Service details, all the Secret Service agents in the United States, all of their bosses, all of their connections or lack thereof, and start to expose that and make that the topic of discussion and stay away from the topic of discussion of theories. That guy was a, a, a mockingbird or some kind of CIA plant or pro. Forget all of that, folks. Ignore it. The issue we have here is the security preparation, the security details, the security execution by the actual people involved. Whether the people involved are being ordered to do with what, what's allowed these things to take place, or if it just is unavoidable, is completely lost on us because none of us pay any attention. All of us pay no attention to what really matters. And what really matters is not these conspiracy theories around the latest incident of an assassination attempt on President Trump, but our inaction against our own federal government through inquiries, through Freedom of Information Acts, through emails, through digging, like you dig on all of their, all of these politicians and all of these people uh, that are accused of crimes. You do all this digging into their family and background and you create all these fucking theories folks, and they go nowhere because none of those theories are reality. Sometimes the truth isn't going to be blatant, but plainly available. Sometimes what really happened is always going to be left up for interpretation. That's just the way things are. And yet, somehow, we get stuck there and never move towards finding a solution or creating conversations that are solution-driven. We do none of that. And we're so much more capable than we can even dream of if we started to do that. There's a lot we need to know about the Trump assassination attempt, but more importantly, there's a lot we can do to get ourselves involved as the citizens, as the government of we, the people, to know who these police officers were, who the state troopers were, who and, and what their backgrounds, how they connected, anybody that above them, their bosses, how are they promoted, who are they connected to, and start to discuss these things. And if there's any nefarious connection, not get stuck on it and create a complete new con conspiracy theory, but in fact, just make it public. Sometimes just unveiling, uncovering, and shining light is all you need. You don't need to get stuck discussing the potential theories of what that light may be showing, because in fact, it may show nothing. As you witness when you watch true crime, and I suggest anybody in politics attempt to watch some of these true crime people. They're lunatics. They, they, they accuse everybody except the perpetrator. And then they'll, they'll, they'll accuse the perpetrator as well. And you don't know where they're going with this stuff. But why aren't they paying attention to the government's action against the potential perpetrator, the accused? That's what we're supposed to be involved with. If we, the people, are the government of the United States, we shouldn't be worried about conspiracy theories as to who committed the murders in Idaho. Is a forever-ending, unnever-ending question. 
but we should be more concerned with the governance of what they've done in Idaho, how they came to the perpetrator. Is it the right perpetrator? And did they perform their duties according to the, the sworn oaths that they take? Now, it's obviously awesome to, to be an onlooker to some of this stuff, but it's awesomely ignorant to suggest that then, for instance, in the case I just referred to, that the France did it or the drug dealers did it or the Aaron Nation did it or Jack did it or Dave did it or you got to be a lunatic to go down that road. There's no reality to support that other than you thinking it and other people agreeing with your thoughts because the other people are as quick to run away from reality as you are. The truth of the matter in the assassination attempts and the assassination chaos that we've seen over our, our lifetimes and, and even the Idaho Four is that all the ancillary theories and conspiracy topics need to be ignored and action needs to be taken to question those people that are involved. They never get questioned. Imagine being in a position of authority in a position to protect people and something goes wrong and you are not questioned. What they do is they run down and they'll accuse you, they'll impugn you, they'll tie you into some conspiracy. But you yourself are never questioned. You yourself are never really looked at. You yourself are never put on the hot seat. So what incentive do you have not to keep doing the lazy ass job you're doing? Where's the incentive? Where is the power of the people? When the power of the people is tied up in false realities that suggest other conspiracy, conspiratorial ways this could or could not have happened, who could or may not have, may be involved or may not be involved, why are all just reality avoiding topics, folks? This is why I have a problem with the Bonginos and the Tuckers and the Joe Rogans and all of these guys with these big, big followings. They're in a situation or in a position. To really help the world change and start us to focus on the reality in front of us. Who's allowing these people to cross the border? What orders are being given to these border guards? How are the border guards dealing with it? How many border guards are actually available on the border? And who's directed that? Who are these people that are making these decisions? Where did they come from? What connections do they have? And why are they trying to hurt America? We don't do that, folks. And yet we do that, but we don't do it on reality. We don't hold reality under that kind of microscope, but we'll certainly hold some theory, okay, about a crime. We'll certainly go after the police and the hospital and the Donna Imes death. We'll certainly attack the uh, surviving biologist in the Kansas City 3, but we won't go after the fentanyl. We won't talk about how dangerous the fentanyl is. We won't point out that in Idaho and every single college campus in the United States of America are surrounded by drug cartels. We don't want to talk about that reality. We want to talk about what happens inside that reality and even, even take it a step further and create a completely theoretical reality to discuss. I don't know how I can say this any plainer. I don't know... What, what could possibly come out of my mouth or someone else's mouth that would alert you to that last little bit that I just spoke is the most damning condemnation of us as people. We do everything we can to avoid reality. And it needs to stop. Those of you and many of you that don't listen to me because I swear, too bad. This is a serious, someone needs to, to I'm trying to set off the alarm. I'm hitting the red alert button. I'm ringing the bell. I'm, and, and you're going to get distracted because I swear. And you're going to create a whole new discussion or a whole new false reality that my swearing really affects you in any way, shape, or form. If the message that I'm giving you includes me showing uh, an, an, a passion that's actually indignation and anger towards the stupidity of us as a group, and I use swear words to express myself, and you have a problem with that, then you'll never catch my message. You've been programmed to the point of ridiculousness. Your reality is in judging me. Your reality is in you think you have a higher moral ground because you don't swear. You are a moron's moron. And there is only way to save yourself from that is to just listen and see if what's being said will change your reality for the better. And I'm telling you, folks. We have the infinite capacity with this tool to communicate, to change the narratives, to change the topics, to change the results, to change the world. And we need to get going. We need to get going. And Donald J. Trump, all by him lonesome, ain't going to get none of that done without us. 
without us. And I don't mean us voting for them. I mean us actually doing something to drive an outcome that's good for the rest of us, even those people you disagree with. And that's it. I'm glad you listened. If you did, if you didn't listen, well, it's your loss. As I've said, and I'll keep saying, I'm not here to collect your ear. I'm here to yell in that damn ear. Um, end of story. From your ass hurts news network, a top cock tower in Beijing, China. This is Sergeant Fry. Have a good day.